my name is dr rajesh dp i am consultant neurologist at medicor madhapur uh, on the eve of epilepsy day we are going to discuss about what is epilepsy and what are the causes types symptoms what are the diagnostic modalities treatment and precautions so what is epilepsy epilepsy is nothing but it's a tendency to get recurrent seizure so one seizure is never classified as an epilepsy so if you have recurrent tendency to, to get seizures then only you are being called as epileptic so there are many types of epilepsy actually uh, broadly classifying it as uh, three types partial seizures generalized seizures and other type of seizures uh, generalized seizures generally are of many types again and uh, the most common seizure overall is the focal seizures the basic difference between generalized and focal seizures are the irritating focus in the brain if there is if it is in the one place and spreading to both uh, parts of the brain and they lead to seizure it is called as focal seizure with secondary generalization and if the focus uh, is there in the midline of the brain and it spread to both sides equally then it is a generalized seizure so this is the basic pathophysiology uh, but main thing is how do we diagnose a seizure basically uh, diagnosing seizure is mainly a clinical thing it is based on the symptoms what uh, the patient uh, the attendants or the witness who witnessed the event it is generally characterized by tonic clonic movement that is there will be posturing of the hands frothing from the mouth tongue bite urination and there will be loss of consciousness and some patients are, uh, are also before the seizure some patient describe as some visual aura in the form of abnormal visual illusions and there can be also a sensory aura in the form of there can be a tingling or numbness in the one side of the body or sometimes patient can feel uh, nausea vomiting and later they they, uh, they get this uh, full blown seizure and uh, even after seizure also patient has uh, they generally most of seizure last for about one to two minutes thereafter the seizure uh, resolves on its own and after that there will be post external state called as some confusion headache and body pains and some patients can also push to vomiting but usually most of the seizures are mainly recognized by this uh, clinical history but sometimes some patients in general some types of absence seizures especially in childhood where there will be only staring look in that uh, type of cases and uh, seizures in elderly which are usually miss and they don't have the classical epileptic manifestations in that patients uh, the eeg and mri will be more useful than this uh, clinical symptomatology so main the diagnosis seizure is by to its uh, semiology and then uh, MRI and EEG assist in diagnosing and to localize the uh, part from where it coming. Coming to treatment options in epilepsy, uh, there are many drugs, anti-epileptic drugs available in the market. There are many broad spectrum anti-epileptic like valprate, uh, levodicide, many other drugs. There are also drugs like carbamazepine, phenytoin, lacosamide, topiramate, carbamazepine and oxcarbamazepine. And recently there are many new drugs that have been also launched like paravaricitam and parampenone etc. But uh, not a single drug covers all types of epilepsy because we need to classify first it as whether a partial seizure or as a generalized seizure or whether partial seizure is secondary generalization or any other type of seizures. So based on the type of epilepsy only after diagnosing it properly by history symptom uh, by the uh, semiology of the event and assisted by MRI and EEG then only we can uh, give an appropriate anti epileptic drug. So, uh, after taking this uh, appropriate anti epileptic drug, we need to take it for a minimum of 2 to 3 years. It depends upon the uh, event which is causing the seizure. Not all patients need uh, seizure medication for 3 years or 5 years. And uh, there are this is a main dilemma. So, how many years has to give the medication and when to stop? Actually, there are no guidelines for uh, all patients, specific patients. There are each guide. We, it's a different for every patient not all one thing is goes good for all patients so for example the causative agent if there is an infection in the brain for example some neurocysticarcosis or any tubercloma or any focal pathology in the brain if you get it for that patients uh, treating the etiology and also giving the medications in that patients after uh, giving three years we can assess uh, later by doing appropriate mri again repeat mri and how is the lesion subside or not and also by EEG whether the discharges are there or not and after that if the patient is seizure free then after we can slowly taper and stop it off but there are some cases where we need lifelong treatment for example uh, some generalized epilepsy juvenile myoclonic epilepsy which is a genetic disorder which usually occurs in the uh, adolescent young people which is characterized by generalized tonal seizures associated with some myoclonic jerks they have early morning, morning myoclonic jerks in that such sort of patients there we have got no option to treat it uh, the medication which is the best drug is the valprate we need to get for lifelong and uh, there are also some cases for example elderly patient with epilepsy even though uh, we don't find a focal pathology in the brain also in such patients if we get that there is a new onset seizure in 70 or 60 years at the time of age if we find a seizure there are very frequent seizures 
then even though we don't find a focal pathology on the imaging as well as on the EEG then also then we have got no option to treat uh, uh, give the antiepileptic for lifeline because we can't take the risk of stopping the drug we don't know exact etiology so they are classified as unclassified types so taking medication daily uh, regularly as prescribed by the doctor at appropriate dosage and uh, taking for a sufficient length of time as assessed by your doctor is very much necessary and uh, don't skip the medications unnecessarily when a doc your doctor prescribes antiepileptic uh, medications it's very important some patients many people think that if i am not having seizure for these many days so this so that i can stop it never do such, such thing if you suddenly stop the antiepileptic drugs the levels in the blood of your medication gets decreased and again it leads to recurrent seizures and it leads to status status means it leads to uh, many uh, number of seizures at a time without any uh, interictal period also there you go into uh, prolonged uh, coma also so never do such things so taking medication at the right time appropriate dose and avoiding uh, sleep deprivation if you have lack of sleep also then your seizures can get respirated and taking alcohol smoking and all other these bad habits lead also leads to the changing of the drug metabolism of the antiepileptic drugs whereby it leads to further the increase of seizures and also leads to drug toxicity that is the antiepileptic which you are taking it may lead, the levels may go up and down and it leads to toxicity and uh, this is the usual management of epilepsy and management of epilepsy in pregnancy is a different issue that should be dealt by regularly by doing the levels only in certain cases otherwise the antiepileptic drugs generally most of the drugs the metabolism change in the pregnancy so thereby uh, even the patient has the medication which he was taking prior to pregnancy it uh, minimum 9 months if before the pregnancy if they are symptom free seizure free then there is more likely chance of not having seizure throughout the pregnancy and we can continue that uh, antiepileptic drug uh, with appropriate folate supplements and also if the patient for example if a, a pregnancy patient is she has already become pregnant and she is on antiepileptic drug then there is no reason to st stop unnecessarily the drug because of uh, causing increased uh, embryonic defects in that case you can give up appropriate antifolate drugs and uh, you can carry on with the medication but better is if there is a chance before the uh, planned pregnancy then put it on saved antiepileptic drugs which doesn't interfere with the growth and development of baby uh, as, and after that you can monitor it accordingly through the pregnancy and uh, always you should be under strict vigilance by your concerned uh, obstetrician and neurologist with uh, regular visits and uh, if needed getting drug levels only for some type of drugs otherwise many things can be managed uh, in opd basis and uh, other thing is precautions also as i said taking the medication right time avoiding unnecessary skippage of medication avoiding alcohol smoking will help a lot and uh, last thing the whenever a seizure patient is there whenever a patient is seizing in front of you never go and uh, all get crowd on him just uh, leave him there give him some space uh, allow him uh, fresh air and after that if you can do just make him on the left letter position and just leave it don't go and tightly uh, catch him or put any keys in the hand so that sees a subside you think it's not at all and don't put any things in the mouth at that time because if you put unnecessarily in the thing in the mouth it can get aspirate also and unnecessarily the things can get aggravated and if you are a trained personal you can put a mouth airway otherwise uh, if you are a trained health personnel otherwise don't do this thing because most of the seizures usually subside within one to two minutes only rarely the seizures sometimes can go into status epileptic in the form of continuous seizures without trigger of conscience that needs a medical uh, urgency it's a medical urgency and you need to get admitted as early as possible under appropriate neurologist and care thank you when you have this any uh, seizure patient uh, witnessing in front of you just call an emergency ambulance and uh, get treatment appropriately thank you